Friday. First week, oh, I'm Bart Snap. This is our Math 150, 1151 class. Oh my goodness. It's Friday. Was that a long first week or what? Yeah, it feels like it's like four weeks down the line. Okay, so today, let's see, we did, today is, today, we're doing 2.2. Two point two, and we're talking about limits still, and so let's draw a picture and see if we can evaluate some limits. Now I'm going to draw this picture myself, so it may not be perfect. Sorry. Okay. Let's see how I do. You can play along at home if you want. Okay, so this will be one, two, three, four, five, six. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Minus one, minus two, minus three. Okay, so here I have my axis drawn. And you know what? Since I have different types of chalk, I can draw on very nice grid. So we can kind of see what's going on and hopefully I can draw all my lines very straight. Doing great, Bart. Doing fantastic. Oh, thank you. Let's see. When you're doing work, you should always give yourself some affirmation. Just remind yourself you're doing a good job, okay? Let's see. Here we go, looking good. Feeling good. Mm-hmm. Several people have asked me when the videos will be online. The answer is, I don't know. Okay, as soon as I find out, I will send out a mass email to you all. Okay, I'll be like, look, you can watch me instead of whatever your favorite TV show is. Okay, there we go. Okay, and now I'm going to plot f of x. Uh, is hot pink good? Yeah, hot pink's great. Here it is. Okay. The dream of the 80s is alive in calculus class. There we go. This is f of x that I'm plotting. Okay. Here it is. This is a really strange function. It looks like this. Let's see. One goes up here. Open. And then we're going to go like so, and then up, here, down, open. Okay, this is, this is f of x. This is f of x. It's a terrible looking function, right? <laughs> but, um, we can, we can do some easy calculations with this, okay? In particular, we can compute some limits. So, what is the limit? I'm going to start off, and I'm, none of these problems are going to be that hard, but if you just follow along, try to think about it, it should, be, it should be okay. What's the limit of f of x as x goes to 4? What's, can somebody tell me the answer to this question? What's the limit of f of x as x goes to 4? Four. And that's not that that's a different four than this one because you just follow along f of x and you see, oh, it's equal to, you go over, that's four right there. I know this is a really poorly written four. Okay, penmanship was not my forte, I guess, but this is equal to four. Okay, fantastic. What is the limit as x goes to uh, minus two of f of x? What's this equal to? Two. So you just follow along, right? And then f of x gets arbitrarily close to this open hole, right? And so the limit as x goes to two of f of x is equal to, you go over here, making sense? Two. Excellent. All right. What's the limit as, now by the way, what is f of, what is f of minus two? What's that equal to? Three, okay? So the limit may not be equal to what the function is. Sort of, I kind of think of it like this. The limit 
is what the function should be. Okay? It's what it should be rather than what it is. Okay, so let, let's do another problem. Um, let's do the limit as x goes to minus 1 of f of x. What's that equal to? Everybody's pausing. That's the right thing to do. And someone says, no, and it doesn't exist. That's right. It doesn't exist. And here's why. Because you can't decide. I mean, here's the, I'm, I'm giving you like the, 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 the moral reason, whatever that means, why it doesn't exist. You can't decide what f should be. If you come from this direction, we have a way of writing that. We say limit as x goes to minus 1. You put a little minus sign up here. It means from the left. From the left. From the left. What's the limit of f of x from the left as x goes to minus 1? It's equal to 1. And I forgot the f of x. I'm sorry, folks. f of x equals 1, OK? And what is the limit? We can also do from the right. So put a little line here, line here. Limit as x goes to minus 1. You put a little plus here to mean you're coming from the right. All right. So what's the limit of f of x as x goes to 1? Oh, I forgot the f of x again. As x goes to 1 from the right, what's that equal to? It's coming from the right, so it's equal to 3. 3, that's right. Outstanding. And so when the left hand limits, these are called, this is called the left hand limit from the left, from the right. When the limits from the left don't equal, The limits from the right. And that's this case here, right? The limit from the left doesn't equal the limit from the right. And then we say the limit does not exist. OK. Sound good? This is pretty easy, right? Now, if you've never seen this before, you might be confused. But you just kind of look at the picture, follow along. What questions do you have about this? I don't think this is too bad. All right. How many of you have calculators in the audience today? Ah, would you like to use them? <laughs> let's use them. Let's do something. Let's go. Let's go a little out of order, okay? Yeah, I had this at my last, uh, my last page of notes, but I kind of like this, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. Get your calculators out. Have some audience participation. Here we go. I'm gonna ask you a question, and we're gonna see what happens. Okay. Now I want to evaluate. We're gonna say let f of x equal to uh, the sine of pi over x. Like, let f of x be sine of pi over x, OK? And you have to set your calculators to radians. We're going to be working in radians. If you set it to degrees, no. Radians. Cool people. Radians are cool. Cool people use radians, OK? Degrees are pretty cool, too. It's all good. All right. So get ready to evaluate this function for me. And what I want to do, I need a convenient way to break this class into thirds. Hmm. What I want to do is I want to fill out a table. OK? Here's x, and here's f of x. <laughs> Yawns are contagious, folks. I mean, hey, I couldn't help myself. So anyhow, uh, we got x and f of x here. And we're going to have, what I'm going to do is 0.d. 
0 0.0D, 0 0.00D, 0 0.000D. There we go. That's not too bad. And I want D to equal 1, 3, and 7. Okay. And so here's what we're going to do. If you're sitting, if you're sitting, I'm going to... I'm going to leave the camera here. If you're sitting on the edges, see people on the edges here? See these people on the edges? If you're sitting on the edges, I want D to equal 1. So you're going to do 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, 0 0.0001, okay? And you're going, to tell, you're going to figure out what these four numbers are for me. That's what I want to know, okay? If you're sitting in the front half of the lecture hall, okay, if you're on the edge, just decide. Okay, just decide where you are. I don't really care. It's fine. But the front half of the lecture hall, I want D to be 3. So that's going to be 0 0.3, 0 0.003, 0 0.003, 0 0.0003. If you're sitting in the back of the lecture hall, let's let D be 7. Okay? Does that make sense? So it's going to be 0 0.7, 0 0.07, 0 0.007, 0 0.0007. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk around and see if you guys are doing it. See, some people are just sitting here like this. Like this person here is like, oh, I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> do you have a calculator? You should get it out. Have you already done it? Okay. You should have lied and said, I already did it. <laughs> you guys doing good? Yep. Radians. Don't forget radians. It's time to practice our calculator machines. Looking good, looking good. It's hard to use on your phone. <laughs> looking great, looking good. Okay, there we go. All right, does anybody have answers for me? No, <laughs> no, I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> anybody have answers for me? Answers? Answers? Does anybody know the multiplication tables? Oh, great. You got answers. Okay, for what D do you have answers? For three. Okay, so I'll put, I'll put that one. I'll put that. This, that will be this one right here. Point. Because I got this. Okay, so everybody else, you don't want to look bad on. Okay, okay well, so what's the answer for f of x here? Um, they're all the same. They're all the same. And it's Eight six six nine six six minus five. Whoa, okay. There. Oops, I had to write what she said. They're all the same. Okay, so the limit is clearly minus eight point eight six six. Clearly, right? Because as you, because we're making this smaller and smaller and smaller. Oh, sorry. Oh, what's the limit? I didn't ask the question. Stupid Bart. Okay, limit as x goes to zero of sine of pi over x is equal to question mark. That's what I want to know, okay? And so we're making a table, and see we're getting the numbers closer and closer and closer. Does that make sense at all? I can't tell. This guy here. Make sense? Okay. He's, he's, he's the barometer for the course. If he says he understands, then I assume that everybody, I'm just kidding, okay. Okay, so anyways, what, 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 what about people in the back? Does anybody in the back have an answer for me? I was told there'd be no participation in this class. <laughs> um, I mean, come on, people. Do you have, does somebody have an answer for me? This is going to be a very long and quiet class. <laughs> sides. How are you guys doing? Anybody have an answer for me in the sides? Oh, on the sides, he says they're all zero. Outstanding. Okay. So point, point one, point oh one, point oh oh one, point oh 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 one. Zero, 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 zero. Oh, maybe the limit should be zero instead of minus point eight six six. Back. How are you doing? <laughs> what do you guys got for me back there? Now, I saw people with their calculators out. No. <laughs> I guess, yeah! They're all different. Okay, and what did you get? Can you tell me some of them? OK, 
Okay, I'm sorry. Can you slow down a little bit? I'm, I'm slow. Negative 0 0.975, 0 0.07. Sorry, back. you had the hardest time. Next one. 0.7. Okay. 0.4433, good enough. 0 0.0007. Thank you. That was awesome. Okay, so now we got all different answers here. What is the limit of this function as x goes to zero? What do you guys think? He says it doesn't exist. Do you have any? Do you have any evidence for this? Do you know? Do you know like the secret? He says they don't match up. It can't exist. That's that's pretty good reasoning. Okay, that's pretty good reasoning. Let me sketch a picture of this plot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems to approach zero at multiple points. Wait a second, that sounds like it's not a function almost, right? A f what's it mean to be not a function? It means that you... To be a function for every value of x is one value of y. To approach zero at multiple points, it almost sounds like it would somehow have to have multiple things. It is a function, don't get me wrong, it is a function. I'm just saying that in some sense it's almost behaving like it's not a function. Okay, some sense, some non-correct sense, I guess. Okay. So what's it doing? It's doing this. It's oscillating wildly as it gets to zero. Literally, it turns into the sort of like sp smear, okay? And you can always get as close as you want to the line, okay? And so what this is illustrating is that you might be tempted to, whenever you want to evaluate a limit, do you just plug in a number that's very close to the number you're going to, right? Here's a case where you can kind of get into trouble doing that. Does that make sense at all? Yeah, this function is not defined at zero, and as you approach zero, it oscillates wildly. This is the oscillating wildly dance. I'd say, I don't suggest you do it at the club, okay? You might hurt somebody, okay? All right, that was fun, I like that. I hope you guys thought it was okay. If you guys thought it was okay and I liked it, then it's a huge win. All right, so now, I still haven't really told you what a limit is. Oh wait, do you guys have any questions about this? Anything you'd like to ask? Anything you don't want to ask? How about indifferent to? Okay, I still haven't really told you what a limit is. I'm giving some, like, heuristic ideas. Do you guys know what heuristic means? What's heuristic mean? Anybody know? Heuristic? That's a word you made up, Bart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's something our common sense tells us, okay? So I've kind of given you common sense definitions of what a limit might be. So here's the mathematical definition. And, um, I was trying to avoid telling you this because I don't want to scare you or anything, not that it's that scary, but I just couldn't figure out a good way to explain it without just telling you the truth, okay? So, the limit as x goes to a of f of x equals L. First I'm going to put a bunch of gibberish. You don't need to write this down. This is all in your textbook, okay? You paid good money for that, I think, okay? And, <laughs> and, and, and um, you just, just pay attention. You're doing great, okay? Limit as x goes to A of fx equals L, okay? If, okay, for all Epsilon greater than zero. Epsilon is just some small number. It doesn't have to be a small number, but it's just some number that's positive, okay? We're, think, we're imagining it to be small. For every, for every epsilon greater than zero, there is, there is a delta. Delta is another small number, okay, greater than zero, okay? Such that zero is less than x minus a, less than delta. Uh, forces f of x minus l to 
to be less than epsilon. Okay, now this probably seems like it's in gibberish or in some foreign language, and I'm going to try to draw a picture that's going to make this make more sense. Okay, that's my that's my goal for the next you know five minutes ish. Okay, but this is in your textbook. So what does this mean? What does this mean? Oh, and I'll give a nice uh, example too. Well, here's the picture. X, Y, pink for f of x. There's f of x. Okay, and now we need to put a point down for, we're taking the limit as x goes to a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one right here or this one right here? This is such that. Yeah, obviously. I'm just kidding. It's not obvious at all. OK, give me one second. I'll write it out correctly. Such that. Such that. OK, so such that. Now, we're taking the limit as we go to A. So there's, there's A, right? And we're saying that it's equal to L. Okay, there's L. And then delta, delta's like our window. Okay? Delta's like our window. This is, this is A plus delta. A plus delta. And here's our window A minus delta. Because remember, we're taking the absolute value of X minus A. So X can be anywhere here. We don't know where X is, but as long as X is somewhere here, when we go up like this, we insist, now look, We insist that it's, oh, I want another color. Here it is. That it's within some epsilon. So L minus epsilon, L plus epsilon. Draw this bold. So basically, you give me some tolerance for the function output. This is like a tolerance for the function output. And I tell you what tolerance for the function input makes sure that, sure that you're within that. Does that make any sense? So it's, here's a real world example. And, I, and uh, if I get it right, I'm going to thank Steve Gupkin for it, because he told me. If I get it wrong, then it's my own fault, OK? So the real world example is you're building some sort of a, you're building a metal cube, OK? And the metal cube has to have certain height and width and depth tolerances, right? But if you're building a metal cube and you change the height, width, and depth, what happens to its, uh, to its mass? It changes. And it doesn't change in a linear fashion. It changes uh, by the volume. And the volume goes up, you know, um, well, by the scale factor. It's the cube of the scale factor that you're scaling this by, OK? So there's a function that describes this to the, to the actual mass, OK? And so if you have to have certain tolerances on both of those, you have to know how to do exactly this sort of calculation, how to change the tolerance of one so that it puts you inside the tolerance of the other. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. If, you, if that's good, then Steve Gupkin. If it's bad, then Bart Snap, OK? <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Here, I can draw this one more, put one more thing here. And if you look in your textbook, you'll see a picture that's very much like this. One of the important things is that notice that the uh, delta puts you within the epsilon, not necessarily equal to it. Okay. All right. So we've seen a lot of cases where limits exist. Here's a case where limit doesn't exist. Okay. Well, we've seen some of those too. Say f of x is equal to this function. You guys know what function that is? It rhymes with, wo with, with war. It's the floor function. OK, it's the floor function. Have you guys ever heard? Who, who here has heard of this function? Who here hasn't heard of this function? Well, that's a pretty good turnout for the hands. That's pretty good. OK, floor function is pretty cool. You guys, it's not very hard. What it does is, 
floor of 5 is equal to 5. Floor of 5.5 is equal to 5. Floor of 5.9 is equal to 5. Floor of 6.1 is equal to 6. It takes the greatest integer less than or equal to your current integer, okay? It's floor. There's different notations for floor, but that's, but that's, um, but th I like this one because it has the bottom part to it. Does that make sense to anybody? Some people are shaking their head yes. Make sure nobody's hands are up. Okay. Yeah, yeah how do you input the floor function? Uh, if uh, I, I think if you, do you have an answer? Do you have your, okay. <laughs> um, floor might be actually built into the math command of the TI-80 something or other. Uh, and if the, you send me an email, I can double check. But anyways, we can plot floor pretty easily without a graphing calculator. Because what we do, here's how it looks. It looks like a stair step. Okay, this is used in computer science a lot, actually. Um, so x and y. So what's? So here's one. Here's two. Here's three. Here's four. Here's one. Here's two. Here's three. Here's four. If you're between zero and one, what's floor of that? Oh, what's floor of x if x is between zero and one? Zero. What's floor of one? And so it's open circle, closed circle. Open circle, closed circle. Open circle, closed circle. Open circle. There's floor. Sound good? Look good? Make sense? All right. Now, I'm going to talk about this definition. So what's the limit? What's the limit? as x goes to 2 of f of x equal to. What's that limit equal to? What was that? Does not exist. It does not exist because as I go to 2 from the left, it's 2. As I go from to 2 from the right, it's 3. It does not exist. Okay? Now I'm going to give uh, reasoning here. Okay, just try to follow along. If it's confusing, eventually someday, maybe four months from now, we'll have the videos up and you can rewatch it. Okay, we'll see what happens. I'm just going to give this quick explanation. Let's not dwell upon it, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so it says for every epsilon, so you're going to give me a little window. So here's the little window you're going to give me. Two plus this little, this is a little, um, what we say is could, could the limit be two? Okay? Could the limit be 2? Could the limit be 2? That's what we ask, okay? And I say, well, if so, then I can put a little window around 2 like this. Here's my little window around 2. And then you should be able, be able to put a little window here such that the answer is always inside this thing. Right? That's what to see. This is, we put a little window here, and then we put a little window here, and see the answer is always inside. That's what we're saying. Can we put a little window around x equals 2? Well, no. Because every time I put a window around x equals 2, I get this thing as well. Do you see what I'm saying? I can't tell. I, I like this. this. This person's going like this. This is the yes, no. Okay? That's good enough. Good enough. Because x could be, f of x could be here. Or f of x could be here with any size window on either side of 2. Okay? This is hard stuff. I'm just introducing it to you if you've never seen this before. Go home, think about it, come back, that sort of thing. Let's let it sit. It's like making a stew, right? It's not that good the first night. And then it gets better, 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 and then it kind of gets worse. Okay? But we, we are, that's, that's when you forget stuff. But we're going to let this sink in, sink in a little bit, okay? That's what I want to do. Okay. Now, we don't really want to think about this definition all the time when we do limits. So we have limit laws, 
Okay, and so they're up here. If you're playing along at home, uh, people, uh, you can open up any calculus book and find some limit laws. They're in our calculus book. Uh, they're page 72 of our text, okay? And we can try to do some of these. Now, it's gonna look just like this. And we have a constant law and a sum law. And so I'll try to, I'll try to, try to bring them up. We're gonna do some, we're gonna do some hardcore examples now. Okay, is that all right with everybody? We do some hardcore examples? No, nope. no, nope. right, right. Yeah, 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 what's up? Yeah, 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 let me, uh, let me turn off this thing and then I'll talk to you, okay? Yeah. It doesn't exist, so, so if you're taking a test, suppose this question's on the test. What's the limit of the floor of x as x goes to two, okay? Here's what you write, you write, does not exist. And then you write, limit as x goes to two minus of f of x is equal to, what's the limit as it goes from the left is equal to two. Limit as x goes to two plus of f of x is equal to, it's coming from this side. Oh, 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 this one's one. This one's one. This one's one. Because when it's going from the left, you end up here. Here, the empty place, okay? And coming from the right, you end up at two. This is a one, okay? Since, then you write, then you write, this means write, and you write, since the left hand limits don't agree with the right hand limit, the limit does not exist. XOXO. Don't write that. That's weird, okay? Um, so, Ugh. So now, uh, right, did I answer your question? Yeah, so you basically can tell like what shade Okay, so now, now you're at, so, so, so like, you can basically just kind of, you can kind of follow your finger and see where you wind up. Okay, now what I said here is, if we go by the definition, the definition says, well, if the limit's two, then I should be able to make a little window around two, and make a little window around where I'm going to here, and force all my answers to be within this place here. But I can't, because when x is equal to 1.9, what is the floor of x? What is floor of 1.9? One, right there. It's not anywhere near two. Yeah, what's up? When the limit from the left does not equal the limit from the right, the limit does not exist. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Let's let me draw a picture. Okay. Does that sound? Does that sound good? Okay, good. I'll draw a picture. I'm sure lots of people have questions about this. This will be two, and this will be four. Okay? And I didn't use any of my color chalk. Here we go. Look at that. Oh, there we go. So this is f of x here. Limit as x goes to three from the left of f of x is equal to Two, because you're, you're falling along, I'm, I'm going to three, I'm going to three from the left, going to three, boop, I stop. Okay, that's what the stopping sound sounds like. Okay, it's equal to two. And the limit as x goes to three from the right of f of x, falling here, 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 um, four. So the limit of f of x as x goes to two does not exist. Did that answer your question? Excellent. Okay. Now let's, let's get a little hardcore. Okay. We don't want to soften our cores. So.
when we compute limits, we assume that x is not equal to the point we're going towards. So check this out. This is like, if I had to give you an example of a limit, this is like the, the best, easiest example. Okay, the best, easiest example. So this is page, I'm, asking, I'm kind of working problems now. Page 78, this is number 40. Okay, this is a fantastic example. The limit as x goes to 3 of x squared minus 2x minus 3 all over x minus 3. Now what's the problem here? What's the problem? Somebody says, x cannot be 3. Why can't x not be 3? It's undefined. We'd be dividing by 0. Okay, so, but that's okay. The limit doesn't really look when x is 3. It looks when x is near 3. Okay, that's the idea. It's near 3. It's not exactly 3. And so, the strategy for solving these problems is basically always the same. Okay? When in doubt, factor. Okay, so let's factor the numerator. So, the, so what we do is we say this is equal to, and look, the best way to do this, this is the way you should do it. I am doing solving the problem the way you should solve the problem, is you need to write this again. This is equal to the limit as x goes to 3, and I'm going to factor the numerator. And how is the numerator factor? Let's see. Yeah, x minus 3, x plus, plus 1, is that right? Okay, now, is, when we're taking the limit, is x equal to 3? Let's try it again. When we're taking the limit, is x equal to 3? No, x is still not equal to 3. Okay, and when x is not equal to 3, we can divide by x minus 3, can't we? Right? So, this is, we're basically doing our, um, where'd my eraser go? Oh. Huh. Here it is. So now, we got this. We canceled that out. This is how you do these problems, okay? But this is not a super hard one. So now, this is equal to, this is equal to the limit as x goes to 3. You keep this around. You use equal signs. Equal is a great sign. It means equals. It means the same. It's equal to x plus 1. Can we plug in 3? Yes. And when you can plug in 3, you do. So this is equal to 4. Okay? This is not a hard problem. This is the starting point. Okay? You guys should be able to do this. Maybe not right now, but you should be able to... you gotta be, you got to be able to solve this problem. Okay? Okay, so now... Are you guys ready to do another one? What questions do you have about this problem? Yeah. He says, how would you prove it with delta and epsilon? Okay, here's the, I'm going to give you the very, very brief idea, okay? With delta and epsilon, the way it's set up, x cannot be 3, okay? It just can't. So if you're doing delta and epsilon, you would take this, you would simplify to here, and you get to this point, okay, where it's x plus 1. And then what you'd do is you would basically, you would, um, you would, you would basically just solve, okay, at that point. I, that's, that's very vague, I'm sorry. But uh, if you want to, I can write the whole thing up for you and I can send it to you in email if you like, okay? I don't think we're going to ask you to do that, okay? <laughs> but if you want to do that, you can be a math major. Be also, I see somebody's hand up! When you, okay, that's a good question. She says, when you cancel, does it, become a, does it become a hole in the graph? The limit doesn't see the holes. Okay? The limit doesn't see the holes. It just kind of looks over it. It sees jumps, but not the holes. That's a very sort of, uh, that's a very sort of, you know, uh, explanation. Hope that's okay. All right, so let's do another, let's do another example.
This one's page 78, uh, number 32. Okay, so it's the limit as h goes to 0 of, and this one's easy, 3 over the square root of 16 plus 3h plus 4. Okay, can anybody tell me what this one is, what we do here? What should we do here? That's a, by the, she, says, she says multiply by the conjugate, and that's a really fantastic idea. We're going to do that in a second, okay? This is a trick question, okay? And can anybody, does anybody know what the trick is? But your instinct is exactly right. It's exactly right, okay? Maybe I should have done one of those first. But this one's a trick question. What's the trick here, yeah? The bottom, the, 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 the denominator is not undefined. So what can you do? Just plug it in. So this is equal to 3 over the square root of 16 plus 4, which is equal to 3 over 4 plus 4, which is equal to 3 over 8. Okay? Trick question. Okay? So you got to look. You got to, don't just start doing math. Okay? Look, say, can I, well, can I plug this one in? Yes? Fantastic. Done. Okay? All right. All right. So now, now we're going to do a tough problem, and we're going to use we're going to use this strategy that was just told to us by, by this fine student in this class. Here we go. Oh yeah, I got some more examples too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Okay, she says, "What do you mean the numerator is not undefined? If I plug in zero here, that's the square root of sixteen plus three h, right?" And so what I, it's 16 plus 0, right? There's no, pro, the, the denominator is not 0. Uh-oh, well, you're not giving me the... <laughs> so the denominator here is not 0. It's square root of 16 plus 4. Square root of 16 is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. That's okay. The typical way these things go wrong is there's a 0 in the denominator. Okay? All right. So now we're going to do an example that looks terrible. It looks horrible, but I don't think it's that bad. Hopefully I didn't make any mistakes last night when I was doing it, because if I did, then I'm going to be embarrassed. But that's OK. You know what? I, I realized something today. The only way I'm not going to make any more mistakes or not be embarrassed is if I die right now, OK? So we're just going to say, forget it. That's part of life, OK? Uh, let's see. X goes to Z. That's my life lesson right there. Somebody asked me what the meaning of life was. Embarrassment. Okay, so now. <laughs> okay, limit has <laughs> X goes to 0 of A. What the heck is A? A, A minus the square root of A squared minus X squared all over X squared. And here we're assuming A is greater than 0. Okay. All right, now. What do you guys think we do here? What do we do here? And someone just, you already told us what to do. What do we do? You multiply by the conjugate. Okay? So here, I'm going to write that out. So you say this is equal to, use the equal signs. Use them well. They like to be used like this. Okay? This, this whole thing is equal to a minus the square root of a squared minus x squared all over x squared. Okay. And then I multiply by the conjugate, so that's going to be times a plus the square root of a squared minus x squared over a plus the square root of a squared minus x squared. Right? Am I okay? And now what happens when you multiply by the conjugate? What's the, what's the benefit of doing that? x goes to 0. What's the numerator look like? What's the numerator look like? A squared. A squared minus 
x squared like that, right? And then the denominator is going to be x squared times a, right? Plus x times um, the square root of a squared minus x. Is that right? x squared like that? Is that right? x squared. This is, this is an x squared right here. I forgot the squared. Thank you. Whew. Save the day. All right. So now, does that look okay to everybody? Okay, I'm going to skip a step here. I'm going to skip a step. Warning. Warning. Beep, beep. What step am I going to skip? Well, look. This is going to be a minus a squared, right? Negative minus x. So what's in the numerator now? So this is equal to the limit as x goes to 0 of x squared. OK? And then what's in the, denom what's in the denominator? What's in the denominator? I'm going to fact, you know, I expanded that x through, but I'm going to factor it out, I think. I'm going to get x squared times a plus the square root of a squared minus x. OK. Is that right? Oh, x squared. Now what can you do? What can you do? Cancel the x squareds. Cancel, cancel. This is equal to the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 over a plus square root of a squared minus x minus x squared, right? Right? What, and what can you do now? Plug in, and you get this is equal to 1 over a plus the square root of a squared. That's equal to 1 over 2a. Oh my goodness, that problem seems so hard. Okay, but you guys can go home. Eventually, you'll watch the video. Okay. I think we are done. You guys should have a nice weekend. Okay. Let me get the camera and everything. I'll be right there, okay?